So let's get started. Um, welcome once again. My name is Jacqueline. Um, we are located at Murphy 1332. Um, we are UCLA International Education Office, the one-stop shop for undergraduate study abroad opportunities. At our office, you can consult with our study abroad advisors about your study abroad options and interests. We can also connect you with peers who have studied abroad themselves. Today, um, I'll be leading the Study Abroad 101 webinar as part of our Global Learning Opportunities Week, during which we are showcasing the different types of programs offered, a number of study abroad related resources, as well as funding opportunities. The session is recorded and will be available on the on demand section of our Global Learning Opportunities Week website at ieo.ucla.edu forward slash glow. So today's agenda, um, I'll explain the program types that we offer and how credit works with each program. It will be followed by ways to fund study abroad and the cost of the programs. I will then conclude with how and when to apply. So let's get started. So study abroad <clears throat> um, is in person once again. For today's session, we primarily want to share that study abroad programs are running in person again and we also want to give you a reminder about renewing and applying your passport. Due to the pandemic, uh, the US State Department has an intensive backlog of passport applications. It's currently taking a couple of months for US citizens to get a passport from uh, delivered. We strongly encourage students who can to apply for or renew their passport now or as soon as possible to ensure that they have a passport in a timely manner. A few programs do require students to secure a student or visitor visa before departure to enter a certain country. So this may require a student to have a passport well before their departure date. Um, this information is for US citizens traveling with American passports, but similar delays may be occurring with your nationality's passport or processing offices. So let's get into the program types and credits. UCLA students can experience a spectrum of study abroad opportunities. There is no one type of study abroad any longer and not one set time to study abroad for everyone. We have traditional university immersion programs. Uh, these types of programs allow students to attend a school like University College London in the UK. Um, we also have various uh, university programs in Italy, Spain, Latin America. Uh, these programs, students are able to take whichever courses they want with local professors and local students at that institution. A mechanical engineer student, for example, can take two engineering courses towards their major and two courses towards their general education requirements. We also have our UCLA faculty-led programs, which students can go on a three to six week long summer program with a UCLA professor and take two to three classes in a more experiential learning environment that anything a lecture at UCLA can offer. These are open to all majors, even if not designed for a specific major. And I will be giving you more examples about our UCLA faculty-led. Um, we also have, our intern and research abroad programs. These are also new models of studying abroad. Now we have opportunities where students can intern for academic credit and make progress towards their degree. There are options where they only intern at a startup in Berlin, business in Shanghai, and there are others where they are conducting field work and taking an ecology class in Costa Rica, for example. These are not the only programs, however, as we also offer dozens others from language focus, international summer schools, programs with UC students only. These are only some of the options um, among others. So with the program types, most programs are not designed around specific majors. Students are welcome to apply um, they're also not obligated to study abroad in their major. You can study abroad to fulfill GEs, a minor, foreign language, or um, for personal or professional development. You don't have to necessarily go just to fulfill any major requirements. Um, all of our programs are meant for students to still make progress towards their degree. And I will be talking more about academic credit and how that 
transferring of credits works. Um, but we definitely encourage our students to expand your research beyond any major related programs. Something to keep in mind, um, and it's very important to notice, is that not all share, not all programs share the same structure. So there are some of the, these are some of the categories where it differs program to program and country to country. With the living setup, there are options from apartments, dorms, and even homestays. Meals are also dependent on the program, and I will share the most that most are self-catered as meal plans are not common outside the US. Um, study abroad also varies, again, depending on the program you choose, you can go into a local university abroad, or you can be at one of our centers abroad learning from researchers that have been contracted by the UC system. Please be advised that the cost of the programs are different than UCLA costs as you are going abroad and fees depend again on all of these factors here from the country you're going to, to the length of the program if you're going just for summer versus going for uh, fall or spring. Again, not all programs are the same. You might see some programs that only offer an apartment or only offer a dorm. It is all dependent on the program and you can see what they offer under the program details. Um, and I will be showing you an example. So here, when I go onto our UCAP programs, um, under the program details, if you go during under the housing tab specifically, you can see that these two different programs offer different housing options. For the Global Health in Mexico, you can see that it only offers a homestay versus the University of Sussex, which offers a hostel, a homestay, or dorm options for students. Um, going into our specific programs, we have UCLA Travel Study. Um, with UCLA Travel Study, these are our faculty-led programs. These are three to six weeks in length and are only offered in the summer. Students generally take two courses with a third optional course being offered depending on the program. UCLA Travel Study is best known for not having to petition any courses. Whatever is under the curriculum tab for the program, that is exactly what you will be seeing on your transcript and it will go on there automatically. Some programs also offer the opportunity to fulfill certain GE requirements as well as the foreign language. So to give you an example of one of our UCLA travel study programs, this is a program called In the Footsteps of Hans Christian Andersen, and it takes place in Denmark in the summer. Again, all of our UCLA travel study is only in the summer. This one is specifically four weeks. Um, some of the highlights of this program include student residences, uh, shared facilities. It is self-catered, so you're able to go and um, discover the food in Denmark, or you can also um, make your own. Several program excursions are included in this program, some including museum tours, um, visiting castles, national galleries, <clears throat> and even a trip to Lund, Sweden. Um, of course, the list is subject to change, um, but these are just some of the examples of where students in the past have gone when attending this program. Uh, the coursework for this program, again, it is specific. Um, and so for this program, students would be taking intro to Scandinavian literature and culture, as well as Scandinavian 143C, Scandinavian crime literature. These two courses do satisfy a writing to literary and cultural analysis, as well as a diversity requirement for letters in college, uh, the College of Letters and Science, excuse me, uh, music and public affairs um, as well. The next program that we offer is the Global Internship Program that takes place in the summer. You are able to intern abroad for academic credit and take a class online that complements the internship as well. This program is best for the following majors, economics, education, engineer, global health, global studies, international area studies, IEDS, political science, and public affairs. These are the majors that it is best for, as there are certain tracks that have been created for these majors to receive credit, but there are other tracks open to other UCLA majors not listed here. As far as locations, students will have different options to choose from. It will vary. Some of the locations include Bali, Berlin, Bogota, Buenos Aires, Cape Town, Medellin, Osaka, and Prague. This is an example of a global uh, internship program. 
the Global Affairs Track is has various locations, um, including Bogota and Medellin, Buenos Aires, Cape Town, Vietnam, and Dublin. This course is eight weeks on site, but it is a total of 10 weeks. Um, and that is because you are finishing the online course that you must take along with the internship. Highlights include the opportunity to intern abroad and network. Uh, you get to live in student residences and you will go on excursions as well. Um, and just to give you an idea where students typically intern, some of the placements include interning in fields of global health, law, economics, uh, NGOs, nonprofits, government and politics, advocacy groups, social work, and think tanks. Our next program is the UC Education Abroad Program, also known as UCEAP. So unlike travel study and the global internship program that is solely available in the summer, the UCEAP programs offer students the opportunity to study abroad in the summer, the fall, the winter, spring, or even the whole year. These programs also offer various formats that include research and internship opportunities, studying abroad at traditional universities or at one of our UC centers abroad. The UCAP programs are best for the various options it has to offer, as well as its ability for students to study abroad for longer rather than just the summer. I would say that it is the main difference of having that opportunity to study abroad uh, for longer with our UCAP programs. Um, I'm going to showcase your examples, but they do not cover how diverse the UCAP programs are, as each program is unique and will vary based on housing, academics, internships, uh, among other factors as well. So the first example is this Yonsei University program where you get to live in the dorms. And again, because it's at Yonsei University, classes uh, are taught by professors from Yonsei University. Uh, this program does have an internship opportunity. So if you wanna network in South Korea, you are able to do so. Students would typically choose their internship once they are already there. Um, when it comes to coursework, students will take four to five courses and you're able to choose these courses from Yonsei's course catalog. So you're basically able to take whatever Yonsei offers during the term you are abroad. The good thing about Yonsei is that they do have an extensive amount of English courses, so you do not need to be proficient in Korean. If you are proficient in Korean, however, you are also able to have courses in Korean. Um, you can also arrange research or independent study at Yonsei and substitute at class. In terms of when you can attend, this program is offered for the fall, spring, or the whole year. Um, and then some of the highlights, again, you are able to take courses with local students. Um, you are able to dorm at Yonsei and it is self-catered. So you're able to explore some of the foods that are um, Korea. And then again, you're able to uh, get an internship um, or do research or independent study. Just to give you an example of how it looks, um, on our UCAP website, you are able to see a brief overview of the program. Here you can see um, that this specific program, Yonsei University, is at that university. Um, you can see the minimum GPA requirement. In this case, for Yonsei, it is a 2.85. You can also see the terms that this program is offered. So you can see that it's fall semester, spring semester, or the whole year. As far as class level, students must be sophomore, junior, or senior standing by the time they depart. And again, because Yonsei offers English courses, there is no language prereq. Another example I wanna share here with you is our Made in Italy program. This is in Florence, Italy. Um, and unlike Yonsei, where the Yonsei University program was offered in fall, spring, or the whole year. This program is offered during fall semester, winter quarter, or spring semester. This is not at a university. It does take place at one of our UC centers, specifically in Florence. Um, you would be having classes from local instructors that can be affiliated with the university, but not necessarily. The highlights include structured courses where you have about eight classes to choose from, and the classes would only be with UC students. As for the housing, you do have the option to stay at an apartment or a homestay. 
Some of the excursions include a Tuscany tour to Siena, Pisa and Luca, and it also includes a pizza cooking lesson. Um, and here is the example of what it looks like on our UCP website. As you can see, it does not have a university. It has UC Center Florence. Um, additionally, the GPA for this program is a 2.0. You can also see that the term is very different from the previous example I gave. This one has summer, fall semester, winter quarter, and spring semester, as mentioned. Um, and again, for the class level, students must be a sophomore, junior, or senior standing by the time they depart. So how do these programs work um, as some are semester and not quarter? If you notice, the Yonsei was a spring semester and fall semester program. Unlike Made in Italy, it was uh, it had the option of a winter quarter. So you don't really have to worry much about that as you are still able to attend the semester programs. If you see one that says fall semester, you would only be gone fall quarter, but your summer might be shortened as programs typically start in August or early September. For spring semester programs, however, you would be away both winter and spring quarter. The spring semester programs don't typically give you the same amount of classes you would take at UCLA, but it would give you around the same amount of units. For spring semester, um, it basically requires a bit more planning, but it can still be doable for some majors. Um, we do have 10 programs at our quarter system uh, specifically that align with our calendar the best. Um, but typically, these quarter programs will be at one of our UC centers and not at a university, um, as they are designed for UC system, including, again, our quarter system. So here is a brief. Um, table. So for summer, in relation to UCLA, um, any summer program typically correlates with the summer that we are out. Uh, fall semester would overlap with fall quarter. Spring semester, again, overlaps with winter and spring. Uh, one other option that we won't delve into much, um, but it's just as important for you all of you to know, is that there are also non-UC programs, which are basically any other study abroad program not offered by the UC system or UCLA. Something to consider um, are the fact that there is no guarantee of credits transferring into UCLA, and there is also no financial aid that can be applied for these non-UC programs. In addition to doing our own research, to doing your own research about the non-UC programs application requirements, you will need to submit a planned academic leave, also known as a PAL. This PAL is extremely important as it notifies UCLA that you will be away for the time being, and the registrar, registrar's office will not charge you any fees for the quarter you are not here. Additionally, admissions will make sure to hold your spot and avoid having you to reapply for UCLA. These non-UC programs are best for students who do not depend on UCLA financial aid or those who cannot find the right program within ours. Um, some of the programs um, that are not UC that students might want to look into um, is CIEE, ISA, or Semester at C. Of course, there are many more, but these are just some of the examples that students might want to look into. Again, non-UC programs um, no guarantee of credit transfer, and there is no financial aid that can be applied. Something that we like to clarify for our students is that transferring courses is not the same as satisfying requirements. This does sound a bit confusing, I know, but please bear with me as I try to explain how academic credit works for these programs. So for UCAP programs, if you are seeking to satisfy degree requirements, you will have to petition. Again, this is for our UCEAP programs. With our UCAP programs, students are guaranteed for the courses to come into UCLA. They will automatically be counted towards the 180 minimum units students need at UCLA, as well as your GPA. However, if you want them to count for a specific requirement like major or minor operative electives or even GE requirements, you will have to petition once you come back and you have your grades. Um, the best way I can explain this is um, because um, our UCP courses are not UCLA specific curriculum, again, um, thinking of back on the Yonsei University program, you are abroad and you are taking these courses at Yonsei, which is 
nothing in relation to UCLA. So um, what you can do before is get the courses pre-approved. So pre-approval, basically you find the course description or the syllabus and you take it to your respective advisor for them to pre-approve. It is not guaranteed for the courses to count for these requirements as the advisors need to see if there's some similarity with UCLA curriculum. If they see that there is, then they can pre-approve it. Again, advisors can't guarantee it will count because you have not taken the course and passed it. But what they can do is pre-approve it. And then once they see your grade, then they can input the credit on your DARS to fulfill the requirement you need. Again, you will need to petition any specific degree requirement. If you wanted to count for your major, you would speak with your major department. If you wanted to count for any other GE requirement, you will need to speak with your college or your school. Um, and again, this is just an overview. All UC programs discussed here guarantee courses to transfer to UCLA. So the programs that I mentioned were UCLA Travel Study, UCLA Global Internship Program, and the UC EAP. Whereas any other non-UC program that I have not discussed here, there is no guarantee for the courses to transfer. Um, and then this is a brief uh, overview that will tell you if a petition is needed. Again, the UCLA Travel Study, it is our UCLA faculty-led, so basically our professors from UCLA have created the curriculum, and so there is no petition needed. Same thing with our UCLA Global Internship Program. Um, the petitioning would be needed with any of our UC EAP programs um, and any non-UC program that students are interested in attending. So let's go into our funding and program costs. The main question we get is, can I use my financial aid for a study abroad program? The answer is yes. Depending on the individual student, your financial aid package can include grants, scholarships, and loans. Students need to be enrolled in the minimum of eight units to be triggered, uh, to trigger their financial aid, and must submit their FAFSA or DREAM Act by the priority deadline. For scholarships, there are scholarship opportunities that students can apply to. The most common type of scholarship is need-based, but there are also merit-based and identity scholarships available. You can see here some of the sample scholarships that are available. Our office has a couple that we offer that range from 1,000 to 5,000 or more. These scholarships typically chip away at the cost. We rarely have or see scholarships that cover the entire program cost. There are also external costs as well that students can, oh, sorry, there are also external scholarships that students can apply to. The Goldman Scholarship is very important, and for students who are uh, Pell recipients, um, you are all eligible to apply for it. Um, within our website, we do have a section for scholarships. You can browse the list and see what the requirements are, as well as the deadlines. Um, our website for scholarships specifically is ieo.ucla.edu forward slash scholarships. So what are the costs of the programs? Mm -hmm. Students typically want to range, but it truly does depend on the program they are interested in. Um, as again, all the programs are very unique. This is an example of the cost for programs in the summer specifically. The first example um, is a UCLA travel study program in Spain. Um, you can see the length and the budget that you would need. Keep in mind that both the room and meal and airfare is an estimated expense of what students typically spend uh, for each category, but there is some fluctuation that can occur if you find a cheap, cheaper plane ticket, for example. Um, in comparison to Mexico, where the peso is cheaper, you will see that it is a cheaper program. Um, in comparison to the UCAP Dublin Physics, uh, you can see that it is more expensive, but you are going for longer and you also get more units. So again, depending on the program, these examples here, you can already see the fluctuation in costs. Um, and again, it is all dependent on the length um, as well as the room and meals. Um, but if you visit our website for each program, you will be able to see these cost breakdowns. Now, in comparison to the fall, here's another example. Just to give you an idea, students typically pay around 
I want to say 12,500 a quarter at UCLA with tuition and fees and housing and meals. Mm -hmm. That is an estimated expense though. For a student who wants to study abroad at ICU Japan, this is an international Christian university, it is almost the same amount that a student would pay at UCLA. In comparison to other programs, going to Yonsei, it is more costly, but again, you are going for longer and taking more units. You might be wondering why Sweden has more units and is longer, but it's cheaper than Korea. I will share that South Korea and Europe do tend to be more expensive. Um, and again, the program fees vary by country and length. Just to give you an example, the programs in the UK are very popular. It is a popular destination. And so you will see that costs can vary um, and be more than, I want to say, $20,000 uh, or more. So again, there's a huge range of costs mm -hmm. when studying abroad. It's all dependent on all these various factors. But looking into our uh, websites and going into the specific program you're interested in, you can see the program, uh, the cost breakdown, as well as the units and the length of the program. When and how to apply. So most of our UCEAP applications are actually open now. This is for summer and fall or programs that uh, are the whole year. Students are able to apply now. If you're interested in programs for winter or spring, those will open early next year in January. The UCP deadlines will vary by country. Uh, some are due early January, some are due until February, and some even in March. Um, the Global Internship Program is opening on no, October 24th. The deadline is December 4th. You do have to apply. There is um, interviews that occur. For the UCLA travel study, it is opening November 16 with a deadline of early April. Um, UCLA travel study is first come, first serve. There is a $300 deposit that is non-refundable. Um, it's basically a registration. So as long as you register, you give your deposit, you will have a spot. Um, again, UCLA Global Internship Program, there are interviews that occur, it's highly selective. Uh, UCAP, um, we do have limited spacing for some of our programs. Um, you can find whether the programs are limited space on our website. Those will be opening up November 1st. So what are the steps to apply to these programs? The first step is to familiarize yourself with our programs and attend a session, which you have already done. Though you have taken the first step, we definitely recommend you explore other webinars and sessions. This is R101, but we have other sessions that are major specific, region specific, uh, some that focus specifically on the program types, uh, as well as others that are focusing on financial aid and funding. Um, we also have other sessions that support student identities like first-gen students, LGBTQ students, and many more. Uh, for the second step, it's very important to clar clarify your goals because it can guide you with what program would be best fit for you. Do you want to satisfy requirements? Do you want to focus on perfecting a foreign language or exploring the language? Is your goal solely to go to a specific country or is it timing and when can best fit your study abroad during undergrad? These are some of the questions that you should ask yourself to, again, clarify what your goals are. As a reminder though, uh, major, your major doesn't necessarily dictate which program you must do. It may present limitations if your major is structured and doesn't allow you to, but again, asking yourself all these questions can help you clarify which program would be best suitable for you. What are the tools you can use on our website? You can access it through this bit.ly um, link, or you can go on our website and go to the Get Started tab. Uh, once you click on the Get Started, there's a sub tab that says how to choose your program. Um, with this great tool, some of the important questions um, that you can ask yourself are available there, and you can also use it as a checklist to see if the programs you want um, best fit your goals. So students often ask, when is the best time to study abroad? There is no one answer as it all depends on the student. We often suggest students consult with their major advisor as they can help you plan your academic years at UCLA and see which year and term would be best. Um, your academic advisors can additionally 
um, when planning your academic years, they can see if you're on track to finishing your major. And again, they would be able to um, best suggest what term would be best for you to study abroad. Once you have clarified your goals, we welcome you to explore the programs. For UCAP, you can use the UCAP website directly, which is seen here. It's ucap.universityofcalifornia.edu. There is a list of over 170 programs that are offered. Um, within the UCP website, you're able to look at the programs as well as their costs, their housing, their academics, and much more. For all other UCLA programs that I've mentioned, including UCLA, Travel Study and the UCLA Global Internship Program, you can find that directly on our website at ieo.ucla.edu. You can further consult with our team if you explore the programs and have further questions. That is where you can schedule an appointment with an advisor or attend our virtual drop-in advising. We will give you more contact information as well as the drop-in advising towards the end. Um, and lastly, this would also be the step to explore some scholarships. Um, here is the link at eo.ucla.edu forward slash scholarships. Um, and again, scholarships typically um, will chip away at the cost, but not necessarily um, have full funding to cover the entire program costs. Our step four is consult advisors and returnees. Again, I cannot stress this enough. We suggest you consult with your major, minor, or the college and school advisors beforehand as they can best tell you whether there are some restrictions with the courses you're allowed to take abroad or if there are other factors for you to consider. During this time, you can also get in contact with student returnees. We love connecting our returnees and hearing about their experience. Often students want to share this experience and connect with those interested in participating in the same program. So definitely reach out to us if you have interest in connecting with a previous study abroad program. We are more than happy to connect you. That way you can speak to a returnee and also get a better insight um, through a student lens. Step five, apply online. So here are the websites for you to apply for our programs. Anything UCAP would be done on their website specifically. There is a two part of the application, but it's fairly simple. It is the UCEAP application and the IEO questionnaire. The eligibility criteria varies by program um, with each one having a class level requirement and a GPA requirement as well. Very few, I would say have a hand, uh, we have maybe like a handful of programs that require a letter of recommendation or a personal statement. Um, but if it does require any of that, you can again, see that on the program specifically. Um, all of this information that I've mentioned is for our UC EAP program specifically. For the UCLA Global Internship Program, it is an application and it does require students to meet the minimum GPA and class standing. The Global Internship is also an application. There will be interviews that occur and you will need to submit your resume as well as answer short answer responses, which typically ask you to introduce yourself and detail your interests. Um, and because this is an internship, it does ask for these short answers so that they can best uh, find an intern that meets your interests. The UCLA travel study is not an application. This is only a registration. Again, as I mentioned, you only submit your registration along with a $300 deposit that is non-refundable and you are in. So long as we have a spot um, as they are first come first serve. Um, although I mentioned all these steps, I do want to highlight that there is no one set order of steps for every student. All of you are going to find yourself at a different stage, and some steps might not be important um, or apply to you, and that is totally okay. If you know what you want to do already, you can go and apply or register. Um, and something that I would still encourage is to attend other sessions. We did give an overview of the programs we offer, but there are other specific sessions for majors, regions, um, some for funding and scholarships, and many more that can offer you some clarity. Um, again, our GLOW sessions are happening all throughout this week. We will also be on Bruin Plaza on Wednesday, so we hope to meet some of you there. 
Uh, I also want to highlight our identity. This is a very important. Taking these abroad in an unknown environment can affect a person in ways that are unexpected. This resource is also important and something you might want to think about when planning your study abroad program. Our advisors are more than happy to talk with you about them as well. We encourage you to take a look at this resource as it is also um, it includes specific questions to ask yourself um, under each of the identities. Um, to read more, you can visit our page at ieo.ucla.edu forward slash diversity. And we have reached our end of our presentation. Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending and participating in the chat. Uh, here's our contact information. We are located in Murphy 1332. You can reach us through our general email. Um, it is info at ieo.ucla.edu. I also want to share that we offer virtual drop-in advising. We host it every Monday, Tuesday, and Fridays from 10 to 12 and 1 to 3 p.m. You can find the Zoom link on our contact page, ieo.ucla.edu forward slash contact. On that same site, you can also find information about how to schedule a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment with us. Lastly, you can follow us on social media for update in Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our handle is at UCLA IEO. We often post deadlines as well as scholarship opportunities, so feel free to follow us there. Um, that is our presentation for our GLOW Study Abroad 101. Um, I will leave the slide up for a bit if you all wanna take a picture, screenshot it, uh, just to have our information there. We hope this has given you a better picture of study abroad and have addressed most of your general questions. We hope you're excited to go abroad as we are to help you with any step. Again, we encourage you to check out the other sessions that go more into depth about identities, majors, fundings, and more. You can find the schedule and links on our website at ieo.ucla.edu forward slash glow. Um, they will also be up on our YouTube channel, UCLA Study Abroad. Thank you again, everyone. We hope to see you at Purim Plaza this Wednesday. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Uh, we are now going into our Q&A. Um, I will stop the recording now.